The Howard Springs Quarantine Facility in the Northern Territory of Australia is raising a lot of eyebrows right now. Even Milk Toast Tim Poole is calling it a concentration camp. Tim doesn't get into the conspiracy theories, he doesn't go down the rabbit holes that I do or Luke Rakowski does, but he's even saying this sounds an awful lot like an involuntary quarantine facility, meaning a concentration camp. So what is the real difference between a quarantine facility and a concentration camp? Let's first go to the oh-so-reliable Wikipedia to see what their thoughts are. The first modern concentration camps were created by the Spanish in 1896 to house Cubans suspected of supporting insurgents during the Cuban War of Independence. The British during the Second Boer War to house Boers to prevent them from supporting the forces to the South African Republic or the Orange Free State. However, early examples of what could be termed as concentration camps were utilized by the United States during their forced removal of Native Americans to temporarily house Indian tribesmen while it was decided where they would be forced to migrate to. According to historian Dan Stone, concentration camps were the logical extension of the phenomena that had long characterized colonial rule. Although the word concentration camp has acquired the connotation of the murder of those detained due to the Nazi concentration camps, the Spanish, British, and American camps did not involve systematic murder of those in them. So it was the Third Reich in Germany and those concentration camps termed as the Holocaust that really gave the heaviness, the loaded connotation to concentration camps. That doesn't mean that concentration camps have not been terrible in the past. We did it during World War II with uh, many of the Japanese that were actually in the United States. Again, we did it with the Native Americans. Actually, when we talk about the Holocaust, there's so much of our hearts that goes out to the Jewish and Polish. Um, there were Russian. There were many different people in those camps that died. However, our heart goes out to them. And yet, I remember in school weeping and other children weeping at what we were learning about the Holocaust, but the way that we were taught about Native Americans and the absolute genocide because how many times do you see a Jew out on the street? Quite often. How many times do you see Native Americans walking around? Not at all. Why is it more sad, the Holocaust, than the extermination of the Native Americans? And yes, we rounded them up in camps, and maybe we didn't have systematic murder in those concentration camps. No, the systematic murder happened elsewhere. We just called it war so we could classify it and categorize it differently according to history. But I also remember that in school we were asking ourselves and other students, how could normal people, people with families and people who love their neighbors, how could they go along with such treachery, such devious and diabolical behavior? How could they actually allow themselves to say okay to this? Well, interestingly enough is here I am at the age of 38 and many of my schoolmates, probably half of them if you think of it statistically, are cheering for these quarantine facilities. The Guardian reports, Northern Territory Police have arrested three people who escaped from Darwin's Howard Springs COVID-19 facility earlier this morning. All three tested negative for COVID on Tuesday and have now been taken into custody. Earlier, police said the trio allegedly jumped the fence at the Center for National Resilience, which is the name for it now, just before 4.40 a.m. Police and staff at the Center for National Resilience are currently confirming the absconders' identities prior to releasing further information, police said. Howard Springs is a large open-air facility that is being used to quarantine Australians returning from overseas. It is also housing a number of residents from Catherine and surrounding areas, where an outbreak of COVID-19 erupted last month. So this isn't just for returning people. They're also taking people from residential areas and putting them in these camps. The alleged escape comes a day after a returned traveler tested positive for the Omicron variant in the facility, and the territory continues to fight COVID outbreaks in remote communities. Now let's go to ABC, the Australian ABC, which reports three teenagers connected. So they're teenagers. 
Three teenagers connected to the Catherine region outbreak sparked a frantic search yesterday after scaling the fence and escaping the facility. In the early hours of the morning, there's two things I want to say about this. Firstly is if they're escaping, it doesn't seem voluntary. Secondly is where were their parents? If they were in their family unit, their parents may have, I could be wrong about this, but maybe their parents would have, I don't know, kept them close. Maybe if they're escaping, it's because they're not near their parents and they were taken from their homes. And that's very scary. Anyone who's ever learned about history might find this to be radically scary. So who's in the right and who's in the wrong here? The ones who wish to escape, who tested negative, are not positive with COVID. And now they're in a camp housing and quarantining people that might have COVID. So they may be afraid that they're going to get COVID. They may be scared because they're not around their parents and they were shoved into a detention center that looks an awful lot like a concentration camp. Let's get back to it. After their arrest hours later, authorities said that the trio were not believed to have come into contact with any members of the community, yet they were still arrested, and had returned negative COVID-19 tests the day before the escape. So the day before the escape, they had negative COVID tests. And then they escaped, they were arrested and brought back to the facility. It came after a 27-year-old COVID negative man escaped the facility on Friday, also climbing a fence, and was later found on Darwin's Mitchell Street party strip. All right, 27-year-old man, test negative for COVID, escapes, and he's found on Main Street or something like that. And they call it a party strip. I'm sure they didn't have to put the party strip in there, but I'm sure that's also, well, we need to make it seem a little more like he's possibly going to spread COVID-19, even though he tested negative. So we got to call it a party strip. He's out partying, right? Maybe he's just trying to blend in with the crowd and not be seen by authorities. Who knows? I'm not going to defend this guy, but what I will say is if this is a voluntary camp, then why did this man get arrested? Why did the three teenagers who were not international travelers get arrested. Why, if this is a voluntary facility, like if you voluntarily go to the hospital to get some kind of procedure done, and then you leave before the procedure or halfway through the procedure, and you don't drive, you don't do anything illegal, you just go across the street to a park, will you get arrested? Who has the authority to arrest you and for what? The Atlantic. NewsGuard Certified is asking, is Australia still a liberal democracy? Is it still a government of the people? You have to ask these questions because it's really curious. Now let's finally take you to what's happening to what I would call the originals, not the aboriginals. There's nothing ab or abnormal about them. They were the originals in this land. I'm going to show you some clips of what's happening to the originals. We are a part of the original sovereign tribal federation. We are part of the community. We are part of the people. And we're standing here united to make, a, make an international call for uh, assistance. We need international attention focused on what's happening here in our communities. We have the Northern Territory government force vaccinating our people, pressuring them using military, using foreign military, foreign police officers, and local, local military and local police officers to pressure our people into taking this, this bioweapon. They are not informing the people. They are lining them up. They are pressuring them. They are telling them they can't eat in the shops. They can't leave the community. They can't go shopping elsewhere. Those, those who are being forced, those who are fleeing to get food or fleeing from this forced vaccination are actually being fined $5,000 for leaving the community. So this is martial law. This is a war crime. This is a crime against humanity. And everything that has been implemented against humanity has been trialed and practiced on the tribal people of this continent. Whatever you think about what's happening here, whatever you think is happening in Australia, if you think that it can't happen here, if you think that it's not happening up in Canada as well, if you think that this isn't all a ploy, a globalist ploy, over a story, a narrative, 
to make something a bad guy. It's invisible. And while you're at it, be an opportunist. Take a lot of the freedoms away from people. Why do you want to take freedoms away from people if you are the government? Well, because that ensures the government's safety. The government is of the people, for the people, by the people. But when they forget that this is a game of musical chairs and we're all humans and we've created this game of scarcity, there can only be so much power around who's going to have the authority to say what, then the government will take more and more freedoms. Why? Because it secures them in their livelihoods and their jobs. It gives them meaning. And if you really look at the reason why we move as individuals, the reason why we create art, the reason why we communicate and connect with community is because we are meaning-seeking creatures. So now I'm going to say, what's happening in Australia? Could it not happen here? Who are the agents that are wishing to overstep a little bit with your freedoms? Just be clear about it. If you're on the left, I understand. If you're on the right, I understand. If you're in the middle, I understand where you're coming from. I really do. But if you don't look at these things and start realizing that this is a pattern that's been repeating itself for quite some time, then I believe you are too scared to realize that what's happening is exactly what happened 80 to 90 years ago. So the real solution the real solution is not violent, but it is marked by action. You must do something. You must find your community. You must start gathering, literally gathering in community, not just online where it can be censored, it can be blocked, it can be shadow banned. You need to start gathering in real community, talking about these things, what must be done, and then start understanding that land is being bought up like it's the new gold. It's not crypto. It's not crypto. It's land. Because at the end of the day, the grid goes down. Land is still going to produce you food. Land is still where you're going to meet with people. Start taking a look at Mother Earth. Not in, in some grandiose scheme saying that the UN or Davos needs to help us figure out this climate problem. No. If we're being blamed for it, the lower class who did nothing to actually destroy the environment, if we're being blamed for it, then we will come up with the solution for it. We are going to start regenerating the soil, carbon fixing, nitrogen fixing, giving back to the earth, growing food, and finding a new way to live in what Charles Eisenstein calls gift economy gift community. Whether you like it or you lump it, there is a new way that is emerging. Whether you like it or hate it, crisis is the best possible time for the greatest possible opportunities to come out. I know this seems scary what's happening, but what's really happening right now is we are waking up. It's not a pretty process, but as you wake up, look for others that are speaking the same language that allow you to feel held, but will not just coddle you and be a yes man or a yes woman. If you need to be checked, if you need to be mirrored, if you need to be called out on some of your ideologies or your behaviors, that's what community does for you. Please, go over to benjosephstewart.com, become a member, get access to the deeper dives. I'm going to go deeper on this very topic. I love you all. Get involved in the Discord chat. Remember on Thursdays, we have the Ben Stewart podcast. We have some excellent guests coming up, and I'll catch you all next time. <laughs>